Jared Poland Frono's photo. Dot com and I want to take a walk down memory lane to 2004 because I want to critique my older photos. We're talking 17 years ago taken with the D2H and I want to go through the 2004 archive so you can see the types of images that I was shooting 17 years ago and put it into perspective how much things actually change throughout time. We're going to take a look and probably see some really crappy images, but I'm interested to see what my editing style was back then because I know that I have edited JPEGs. They were ones that I edited raw files and exported as JPEGs and then I saved those because we didn't have DNGs, I don't think at the time, and I don't think we had uh, the, the, what are they called, snapshots. So yeah, I used to export them. So let's turn over to here and we can see that I've got a whole list of 2004 stuff. Now this is music related from 2004. Three Doors Down, we've got Avril Lavigne, Ben Queller, Five for Fighting. Let's go to this Three Doors Down weekend thing. Now we can see here that we were at the airport. Then I took a couple of pictures uh, of myself on the airplane. Wow, that's thin, small Jared. Thin, super small Jared. Holy Jesus, man. Um, so what was going on is three doors down. Uh, okay, let me, let me take that back a step. What was going on is I was attempting to do a music magazine, an actual print magazine in 2004, 2005. And yeah, that was not a good idea. What would have been a better idea in 2004, 2005 would have been to do an online website, some sort of blog, instead of trying to print a Maggie's, that was the dumbest thing we could have ever done. But you learn from this stuff. You learn from your past and your mistakes. Uh, it should have been a website. It should have never been a print magazine. That is just so stupid in the time of, anyway. Ooh, this guy's hot. Look at this guy. That's actually a good photo of me. I need to save that for, uh, save that, come back to that for later. But let's get to some, <laughs> so this is testing. They were doing some charity event, Three Doors Down. I don't know what that white, oh, that red, I, okay, good, the black line's gone. But this is Brad from, Brad, right, his name? Three Doors Down, really don't follow them anymore, but uh, we've got Skinner, Leonard Skinner here played. Bad photos, bad photos, not great photos. What, what, what are they shot at? Let's look at the, let's look at the lighting here. Oh, geez, one, one twenty-fifth of a second at 2.8, 640 ISO, which I was really kind of afraid to go past with the 17 to 55 2.8. So that was a DX lens that I purchased. Um, stuff's not very good. So remember, these are only 4.1 megapixels. Um, so this was backstage, I guess, with Skinner. Yeah, because this guy was an original member, if I recall. 5.6 with the flash. This is Daniel Adair, if I remember. He's with uh, uh, Nickelback now. He became their drummer in between doing the Three Doors Down stuff. But anyway, not, th this stuff wasn't really very good. Well, I don't even want to look at it. It's it's really bad. Oh, and then Shine Down was playing. Come on, man, look at this light. Come on, man. 160 at the 28 at 500 with the 70 to 200. It's just like, oh, I blew that out. Really bad, tight stuff. This is the stuff I always talk to you guys. When I'm doing critiques, I'm like, Man, all I did was shoot super, I shot tight shots that aren't very good. I mean, the lighting wasn't very good. And then, oh geez. I don't even, oh my God. This guy, this guy wearing a, a jacket, a sport coat, as if that made me any cooler. Uh, let's get out of there. Avril Lavigne in 2004. I guess I didn't take a lot of pictures of Avril. Or actually, all I did was save these six, I guess. Um, so that's Avril. One thirteenth of a second, popping a flash, going slow, trying to get some movement. She's super long time ago. And I was like, yeah, let's do a super tight eye shot because her eyes are so amazing. And so that's what I ended up doing there. Um, this was a Rolling Stone assignment to shoot Ben Queller. Uh, it was Ben Queller and Death Cab for Cutie on the same night, actually. They were, one opened, uh, Ben opened for Death Cab at the time. It was before Death Cab blew up. And so Rolling Stone ended up running, I think, this image in the magazine. What is that? With the 80 to 200, 2.8. We're at 1 50th of a second at F5. ISO four, uh, 500. <sighs> Man. I mean, you, here, let, microphone eating shot, no good. Microphone eating shot, microphone eating shot. All this is microphone eating shot. You may be saying, why weren't you in a pit? They didn't have a pit at the... Uh, Trocadero that day, and plus the stage was like six feet high at the Trocadero when you were in the pit. So, 
Not very good cutting the feet off. Oh, actually, that's the one they ran. I think they ran this one, maybe. All right, that's terrible. Five for fighting. Uh, the Superman song, you know, the biggest thing in the world. So I don't know why these people are looking at me. I don't know why I was taking pictures on South Street like that. This is actually a really good story. Um, we were doing the magazine terribly. It should have been an online magazine, I'll say that. But Five for Fighting was coming to town. And I got a, a pass to shoot the show. And they said he had no time. He had no time to meet before the show and do an interview and get some photos taken. So what do we do? We go down early. We stand outside. He comes walking down the street to go back into the TLA. And we're like, hey, we're here to cover the show. The management said you didn't have time for an interview. He's like, come on upstairs. One of the nicest guys ever. He's like, come on upstairs. We'll do the interview. And that's what we did. Um, <laughs> popping the flash because they didn't have a lot of light in there. There wasn't much that we could do. These aren't great photos. Not great photos at all. And I used the 20 millimeter because that was kind of the widest one I had. Well, but beside the 17 to, to 55. Maybe, maybe I didn't have the 17 to 55 yet for this shoot. Because when was this? This is uh, June 17th of 04. And then I shot the show. The light was really bad. 80 to 200, 2.8. I didn't have the 70 to 200 yet. I had the old one trying to focus on there. Super tight shot. Not very interesting from the pit. Oh, not in focus. Micro major microphone eating shot and then looking. Just not very, not very good. I mean, in another, in another set series, I'll take you back to the film days of shooting um, concerts and show you what that stuff looked at. It looked like. But here's Black Eyed Peas. This is actually pretty good. Uh, let's see, Black Eyed Peas backstage. I used to take my strobe with me, an actual studio strobe. People are like, Jared, you never shot flash, you never do flash, whatever, I did flash. I used to take a bag with light stands, umbrellas, I'd take the one strobe in my backpack and I would go and try to get artists to sit down before the show. And here we got Fergie, we've got the rest of the Black Eyed Peas, we got Sweets, who was a security guard. Yeah, he was good, he was a nice guy. Um, this turned out to be one of my favorite shots, but again, every time I look at it, I'm like, is this back focused? I can never tell with the 20 millimeter. I might have not had the 17 to 55 yet, but this was like, a, I guess a good shot. I mean, it's a band shot of Black Eyed Peas backstage. And Fergie doing whatever Fergie's doing. It wasn't easy, man. And I, and it, you know, you get nervous. I guess I got a little nervous there. I'm like, all right, they're sitting here. Now I need to take pictures. I'm not good at directing. I'm not good at posing. And here's Fergie. And uh, another photographer guy put this pillow down here for bounce light into her face. So these should be edited with the old school. Oh, no, that's not edited. Some of my stuff should be edited. I think I went back and re-edited this. Yeah, I re-edited this for the modern times. But there are some that were old school edited. And then just, I used the flash the entire time for the show. I don't even want to show you these. These are just really bad concert photos, guys. So it's just everything's kind of tight and it doesn't really do very much, right? Just shooting someone on stage doesn't do much. So all learning process, not really good photos. So I didn't get some good photos there. Butch Walker will skip. Death Cab for Cutie, same thing. Oh, I actually went into the pit there. Why didn't I go in the pit for Ben Queller? So this is super young, super old, using a flash, which is really not what you're supposed to do in the pit, but I guess I did at the time. Yeah, these aren't, these aren't very good. Oh my God. This is when you try to do that slow movement stuff. You're like, yeah, let's do one fourth of a second. It will be amazing. Oh man, oh boy, oh I did some wides. So this is a, the truck. So you can see how high the stage is. It's like my head height. I did a lot of shows back there in the day. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you Fro Pack 3 in action 
on these 17-year-old raw files. We got Zoolander, looks pretty good with one click. Winnebago looks solid. I'd probably end up going with the Winnebago edit for something like this. Then we've got Prestige Worldwide. That looks really good. You may need to do a little bit of a tweak there. We've got November Rain, followed up here by Capone. Capone looks really good. And then we've got Fifth Element to round it out. Now this gives me a pretty good starting point. And if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow, we've created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you'd like to get the Fro Pack Triple Play Bundle with Fro Pack 1, 2, and 3, you could save even more. But now, let's get back to the video. Not very good photos. Donovan Frankenreiter was an interesting one. So let, let's click on this. I want to show you... Let's look at raw files. I actually... So I brought the strobe out. I got Donovan. He was sitting here. I got some good stuff. I like some of this. I like... I like uh, not that. That's bad. His eyes are closed. His eyes are open there. Pretty cool. I love the, this was a place called S S North by Northwest was the bar. Really small. And they got a couple of bands to come in and play every once in a while. Um, thought I'd get creative. Like, look how creative I am. I'm super creative. I'm super duper creative with him. I mean, they don't suck. They're not terrible photos. They're not the greatest photos ever. I actually, I actually like some of these. Cut his fingers off. This one I didn't, I actually, wow, that's a good one. I like, I like that one. One, one sixtieth at F10. Yeah, I didn't exactly know what I was doing with the strobes, but they look how good it looks just straight out of camera. Yep, I set my white balance to, 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 to the flash. And look, you can recover some of this old stuff from back in the day. That's what's cool about having these ancient raw files is you can still go back. You don't have a lot of, I mean, you still have some data there. But you can just pull it back and be like that. That's where it started, a little flat, and this is a little punchy. I actually like that photo. That's a pretty good photo. But you can see you shoot a lot to try and get something. This was one of my favorite photos at the time. Let me see if it's the old develop. No, I, I must have re-upped it. Um, the problem is, I think he's sharp. That was the hardest thing to tell was, is he in focus or is he not? Using the 20 millimeter again. Did I not have the, let's look at the metadata. Did I not have the 17 to 55? No, I had an 80 to 200 and a 20 millimeter 28. And probably a 35 to 70 28. I didn't have very much. Then I got them to go outside. We did some band photos. Oy, not very, not very good. Uh, and then back into the raw. See, at the time, I shot RAW plus JPEG. This was 2004, I just got my D2H, and I didn't know whether I should shoot RAW or JPEG. And I talked to some of my college professors, and they didn't really have good answers. And so for me, I made my own choice to shoot both. I'm like, all right, well the JPEGs come out looking better than RAW files, but RAW files are all of this data, maybe I should have that. So I made sure I had both. So I shot RAW plus JPEG fine, the highest quality one, and went from there. Uh, and so then this was backstage. You can see what I'm shooting. I'm like, I'm so cool. Look at this, look at this bright green edit right here. I know that's an old school edit. Um, but this is an interesting one to show, the fest Festivale. Let's look at the raw files. We've got Silvertide. This was the first time I encountered them. They're from Philly. I now had my 17 to 55. This is a good shot, but then I got a lot of this stuff. Here, let's just go through these. Not very good. One one sixtieth of a second and Walt ran around the stage so much. One forty fifth of a second. What the hell are you doing? Was I in aperture priority maybe? I couldn't have been. I had to be. No, I couldn't have been. I had to be trying to do this myself. Or was I in aperture priority? Would that tell me what mode I was in? Flash didn't. Well, of course I wasn't using the flash. There's probably no comments. I guess it doesn't tell me what mode I was in at the time. But anyway, that's not that bad. But I cut his foot off, I cut his toe off. So this is Nick Perry, that's Walt. You can't do much at 800 ISO. Actually, the files don't look terrible at 800. I probably could have pushed to 1250. But what are you thinking at 1 40th of a second? How are you gonna get this jump at 1 60th of a second? 
It's just bad, right? How did I think I was gonna freeze the action at 160th and 150th? This has to be aperture priority. Why the hell would it be bouncing around this whole time? So that's why you don't shoot aperture priority in these modes. You set your own settings to what it should be. So I just couldn't do anything with Walt until he stood still. All right, so lots of bad photos here. Then we had the hives, right, the hives? And the guy's name was Pelly, right? They're Swedish. He's right up in front. I mean, I'm right up in front. I'm, I'm really close, but these shots aren't great. They're typical pit photos. Oh my God, 150th of a second, 160th of a second, 1 125th. Oh, one, at 6400, at 640 ISO. These are so damaging. Oh my God, they're bad. 20 millimeter, no, 17. I didn't need the 20 anymore because I had the 17 to 55. Then we had Franz Ferdinand. This was at the, the Festival. Festi Festival. December 2nd, 2004. So this is Franz Ferdinand playing Take Me Out, probably. These full body shots aren't terrible. These aren't terrible right here. Um, the exposure is being, I think, probably thrown off by the background. We could, we could, we could, we could probably work with this. Tighten it up with some clarity and sharpness. That's not terrible. That's where it started. That's where it finished. I know a lot more, and we have a lot more power today to edit with than we did before. Um, so then you can see I just not microphone eating, just trying to get my composition as right as possible. When it goes red, it's terrible. The lighting's terrible. And this is one of my favorite shots. Is this one? 1 125th at 2.8. The only reason he's semi-sharp is because he's at his, the apex of his jump. He's not, even in he's not even in focus, man. No way I was gonna be able to track that very well back then. And actually, these are pretty good. So these are pretty good. You can see I got his feet in there. Ugh, you lose the light. Well, actually, we'll know if it's aperture priority because that light shifted. No, oh, I may have just been shooting at 1 125th. Or maybe I was maybe I was manually doing it terribly. No, not very good. Let, 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 let's skip a couple here. Um, actually, there's one from Graham Colton I want to show you. So I got Graham here. This. Like, this is one of my favorite shots, and now every time I look at it, I'm like, holy back-focused. It's straight up back-focused on the background. Bad, bad, bad. John Butler trio. John Mayer. This was John Mayer playing a high school prom at Pensbury High School. Uh, I was there shooting for Rolling Stone. And this guy right here is Bob Costa, Robert Costa, who is a, uh, a journalist for, he was, he's writing a book right now, but he was with the Washington Post. Yeah, not, not the greatest photos in the world either with John Mayer, I was popping the flash off. But yeah, this was it. And then before we went over, I met them across the street. This is Jenny LSQ, she a, was a Rolling Stone writer, she's now on Sirius. Um, but yeah, it's a young, a young John Mayer at the time. Oh, let's show you the Kanye West stuff and we'll wrap this up. 12 pictures of Kanye West. The story of this is really simple. Um, waited outside in the rain, didn't have a pass. This was a private show for like Drexel or Temple University or one of the schools. Kanye was coming. I waited outside in the rain with my stuff, got a uh, security guard to finally talk to the tour manager. Tour manager comes out, I'm like, I'm freelancing for Rolling Stone, so on and so forth. Can I come in and get some pictures? He's just like, yeah, you can set up in this room. The room has this American flag on the wall. That's what it had. And he's like, you'll have like two minutes. So Kanye West shows up and he's like, can we bring in my boy to take pictures? I'm like, I, I don't know who this guy is. Well, it turns out it's John Legend before John Legend released an album. I had no idea. So I'm like, I don't want this guy in my pictures to ruin it. Well, look at these, look at these pictures. So I pop my strobe off. That one's not terrible. It's a young John Legend. That's not terrible, but I'm like, oh, let's do this. And that's the winning shot right there. Um, is it back focused? Probably. Is it focused on the wall? I don't know. It's so hard to tell back then with the four megapixels, but this, this one holds up any way you slice it. And then the rest of them, I always like this one because it framed Kanye's eyes better. 
Actually, I like the positioning of that one, but I like the way that it frames his head there. So that's a good one to Kanye. Um, and that super interesting Jesus necklace. And that's it. That's, that's what I took. That's my 2004 concert stuff. We got Pixies and NERD um, with Questlove. What, what did Questlove have? Oh yeah, he had one of these Sony point and shoots at the time. So that was interesting. Me, I was big with giving me the hands. Like, give me the hands! Give me the hands, put them there and all that stuff. Um, I'll keep going back and critiquing the old stuff so you guys can see what I was doing. Cause this is 17 years ago. It's not like it's the uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread. There, there's some good stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff in between the good stuff. Um, and so I just want you to see what, what I was doing 17 years ago when I was shooting for these types of images so that you can get an understanding of where you're at today and just under, just know that it takes time. All this stuff takes time. It takes time to get there. It takes time to get better. You get better with more time. You shoot less crappy photos. Now we actually shoot more photos, but we get better results. Um, and that's, that's it, man. Let me know what you guys think. You want me to keep continuing to do these? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.